quiz. <laughs> so I would like for you to answer these questions mentally. These are some questions on dietary supplements. Do you take them? Do you need them? Do you know if they are safe? Do you know if they are effective? And my final question. I know I didn't give much time to answer these questions, but I think you get the idea. My final question, do you ask yourself these questions when you purchase dietary supplements? This is the most important question. More than 50% of the US population takes dietary supplements. And in 2010, we spent $28 billion on dietary supplements. $28 billion. And majority of people who consume dietary supplements are in high economical status and highly educated. So now let's go back to our questions. Do we need to take dietary supplements? For those of you who said yes, and you do take them. For the most part, we don't need to take dietary supplements. We need to take them if we are deficient in a vitamin or a mineral based on a blood test. We only need them if you are old, malnourished, pregnant, nursing, or have a deficiency, or have a specific symptom that a dietary supplement, a vitamin herb, can help. But for the most part, we don't. The next question was the safety. Are dietary supplements safe? The short answer to this question is this. We don't know it. We don't know if dietary supplements are safe. Pharmaceuticals in this country are, should be approved by FDA for their safety and efficacy before they reach the market. So before drugs reach us, the consumers, they need to be approved by FDA. There are no provisions in the law for FDA to approve dietary supplements for their efficacy or safety. So what does that mean? That means many dietary supplements on the market, and I like to say many, not all of them, are adulterated. They don't have high good qualities. They are contaminated with heavy metals or they may contain ingredients that are not even listed on the bottles. So how can we find out how unsafe they are? Only when they harm us. That's when we usually find out. A number of people experienced heart attacks not too long ago. Why did they experience heart attacks? Because uh, an unexperienced harvester mistook foxglove, that is a plant containing digitalis, and digitalis can give you heart attack, with this one, plantain. And as you can see, these plants look very similar. Okay, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, so this harvester mixed up these two plants and by the way plantain is used as a natural laxative so that's why people buy this uh, uh, product. The harvester mistook them for one year various people were taking it and the, and the uh, product was being distributed by a number of manufacturers. It was not until the, that year, a year went by, until this adulteration was discovered. In another study, an in independent investigation of 2,000 dietary supplements on the market, made by 300 manufacturers, one in four, one in four, that is 25% of them, 25% of the dietary supplements were adulterated. They had a quality issue. And often that quality issue was contamination with heavy metals. So let's assume that we are taking a supplement that is not adulterated, that is not contaminated, that has a high quality. 
I would like to go back to my answer. We still don't know how safe they are because we can still have side effects and these supplements can still interact with the normal medications that we take. So again, we don't know how safe they are. Let's talk about efficacy. Right, let's talk about efficacy. How effective are these supplements? For those of you who said they are effective, the answer is, again, we don't know. If you are deficient in a vitamin or a mineral, they may help, no doubt. And that deficiency should be proven based on a blood test that your doctor ordered. But for the most part, our, no, our levels, mineral vitamin levels, are within normal limits. So if we take a supplement, it's almost like we are overdosing ourselves. And we still don't know if more is better. It is really hard to find out if more is better. And I think the best example is vitamin C. We all know what vitamin C is, right? We have been studying vitamin C for 75 years. And we still don't know if vitamin C does any good after all this time. So why is it that we have so many claims? Why is it that we have claims like this? Supports the immune system. This supplement supports the immune system. This supplement makes the fat disappear. This one builds muscles and muscle mass and strength. And this one improves your memory, right? If when we go to stores, these are the claims that we see. So why is it that we do have these claims on the bottles of these supplements? Well, if we pay attention on the bottles and read the fine print, we read this statement. Can you read that? No? Let me, I have, I usually carry this when I go to a vitamin store too. <laughs> Actually, uh, Oh, I can't read this. It's just I need more help here. So, so I'm going to use this. No, I'm going to use this to read this. It says, this statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any diseases. I come back to this. This is what is written on the bottles, which means that many products on the market again, don't have high qualities. This is pretty much what we see today is the modern version of the um, snake oil salesman. So what should we do? So the question is, what should we do? We need to educate ourselves. The first question is, do I really need this? Do I really need to take this supplement? The second question is, who is manufacturing this supplement? Do they practice good manufacturing practices when they are making that product? Is their manufacturing facilities inspected by a reputable organization such as USP? How about the efficacy? Who is managing the website that endorses the supplement? What is the quality of the science? If they are making scientific claim where was this science published? What is the quality of that science? So again, it's good to have this magnifier when we go to the store and we look at these supplements. It is not easy to find answers to these questions. Is it easy? It's not. So again, what should we do? What should we do? This is the big question. I try to um, think of someone who doesn't take dietary supplements. And the person who came to my mind was my grandmother. My grandmother never took dietary supplements. When she was 70 years old, she had a complete checkup. And the doctor who reviewed her blood test told her that you have the blood work of a 20-year-old. And my grandmother asked the doctor, wait a minute, how come I have white hair and all these wrinkles? And the doctor said, well, ma'am, you are 70 years old. She didn't like that answer. <laughs> my grandmother passed away when she was 88 years old. 
and the average life expectancy in her country at the time was 63. So what did she do? What was her health plan? What were her secrets? My grandmother was very active. She was constantly moving and she was very active. She walked everywhere. She never went to a gym. She never lifted any weights, but she was constantly moving. Once she asked me to accompany her to a friend's house for tea, and we started walking. Half an hour later, I said, how many more minutes, how much longer do we have to go? And she said, a few more minutes. We walked for another hour. We got to her friend's house, we had our tea, and we walked back 90 minutes. My grandmother did not know the science of exercise. She didn't know that exercise can prevent diabetes by improving insulin secretion. She didn't know that exercise can improve inflammation. She didn't know exercise can improve cholesterol number, improve cognition, can prevent dep depression because we increase our endorphin levels. She didn't know exercise can decrease stress, prevent osteoporosis, and even lower blood pressure. She didn't know the signs. My grandmother ate lots of fresh fruits, vegetables, and nuts. I remember once I asked her, once I told her that I, um, I was tired and I was very sleepy and tired, she reached into her pocket and gave me some almonds. Another time I told her that I was uh, having a headache, a very bad headache. She reached into her pocket and she gave me some walnuts. My grandmother didn't know anything about functional foods and the science behind the use of functional foods. She didn't know that by consuming fresh fruits, vegetables, and nuts, she would never become deficient in a vitamin or in a mineral, and she didn't know that functional foods, fresh fruits, vegetables, and nuts, were really high, had high contents of polyphenols, fibers, natural antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. She didn't know the science behind using fresh fruits, vegetables, and nuts. She didn't know that the natural antioxidants in them will decrease oxidative stress in our body. She didn't know that they can improve our cholesterol number or may improve the heart function, may improve glucose level, lower blood pressure, and they may even delay cancer. She didn't know that. My grandmother also had a very strong faith and a positive attitude. She always saw the glass completely full, not half full. She, this picture was taken a few hours before she had a surgery. She was giggling with my grandfather, telling him that if she died under the surgery, he cannot marry a woman who is more beautiful than her. <laughs> and she also had a very strong faith. I remember when I was preparing for my boards, I was really worried and she called me and she said, you shouldn't worry because I have decided to do some heavy duty praying for you. I passed those boards with 75% and the passing grade was 75%. I think she had something to do with that given what a poor test taker I am. My grandmother didn't know the science of optimism and the science of having a strong faith. She didn't know that faith and optimism can add years to your life, can increase your lifespan, delay diseases, it can prevent depression, make you anxiety free or lower your blood pressure and even delay cancer. She didn't know that. I like to follow my grandmother's health plan. I am not against dietary supplements. If I'm deficient in a vitamin supplement or if I have a specific symptom that a supplement can help me, I'll go for it. Of course, as long as I can verify that that suppl supplement is safe and effective. I'm going to ask you a final question, a couple of final questions. So after answering these questions and listening to me today, do you think you need the supplements that you are taking right now? And if you do, 
how much do you know about their safety and efficacy? And do you think that next time that you go to a store, you walk in with your magnifier and you make sure that you know what you're taking, remembering these questions and answer them with your magnifier before you take them. Thank you.